Okay, so we're in notes number 21, univariate estimation, and I'm exploring the um, objectives of deconvolution and how to uh, attain that. So um, deconvolution, as you remember from 706, is based on the physical model, which is a model of filtering, where you have, for instance, for the uh, seismic reflection um, imaging problem. You have an Earth reflectivity sequence in time depth x, which you uh, act on with a, you convolve with a filter, which is the source wavelet, maybe the correlated vibrator wavelet, and then you add noise, and that gives you the reflection data. Very simple one dimensional model. And of course, in frequency, as you're aware, the uh, Fourier transform of the data, capital Y, is equal to the uh, product of the Fourier transform of the, um, of the filter with the Fourier transform of the Earth reflectivity um, at each frequency omega. So just multiplying two complex numbers uh, by each other. Uh, and you can add noise, uh, the Fourier transform of noise as well. So, um, all right, thinking about the, uh, the problem of deconvolving away a, uh, uh, a more complex uh, source wavelet than we would like, and the problem of maybe getting uh, our source wavelet uh, compressed so that we can uh, better identify weak reflections and time them. Um, we, uh, we might think that we have a good recording already of the, this, um, um, of this source wavelet, you know, at the vibrator, maybe the vibrator was bouncing around on top of, uh, of a sand pit. And so the, uh, the source wavelet is way more complicated than we would like, but still the accelerometer on the, on the, the plate of the vibrator, um, is, um, going to give us a pretty accurate uh, representation of the uh, complex source wavelet that's going to go into the ground. So uh, uh, with this filter model, then we can try to deconvolve uh, this known source f of t away from the data y of t in the frequency domain by spectral division. So an estimate of the, uh, of the input x, um, in the, again in the Fourier domain, um, uh, which is the uh, would be the Earth reflectivity sequence, uh, which is what we want in reflection, given an estimate of the known, you know, hopefully known uh, uh, source wavelet f, the filter, is uh, very simply the estimate of x x hat in the Fourier domain is uh, uh, again individually frequency by frequency the uh, Fourier transform data divided by the uh, Fourier transform of the estimate of the uh, source wavelet, f. Um, now, we want to uh, normalize this a bit because there may be places where uh, the magnitude of our f estimate, f hat, uh, there may be frequencies for which it's zero. And you could imagine that would especially be true for a, uh, a vibrator sweep because it only has power within the sweep frequencies, yet uh, uh, we can't uh, just cut off this process uh, necessarily uh, abruptly at the uh, edges of the sweep frequencies. So um, we uh, uh, do a, a kind of a simple normalization okay, <clears throat> um, to uh, examine this, uh, this issue. Uh, so we multiply uh, both the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, by 1. And uh, that uh, thing is, um, is uh, f hat conjugate. Okay? So uh, we, can, um, we can get the Fourier transform of our uh, hopefully known source wavelet, f hat. We can just as easily get its uh, complex conjugate um, in the Fourier domain. And then we multiply the numerator by that and the denominator by that. So what we have then is uh, our, our input 
data, okay, um, I'm sorry, our, our, yeah, our, our data, not our input, it's our output data, and we multiply it, we process it by multiplying it by the, um, uh, by F conjugate, okay, at each, uh, at each frequency. Um, now think back, uh, you remember that uh, the, the Fourier domain expressions for uh, um, convolution is just uh, would be if you were to convolve y and f, which uh, um, uh, we don't want to do, um, you know, because y has already been uh, convolved by f supposedly in the uh, in the ground. But if we were to convolve y and f, that would be multiplying y by by f alone. Okay, but here we're multiplying y by f conjugate. What operation is that? Do you guys remember? So you take uh, uh, you multiply in the frequency domain, and it's not convolution because you're uh, taking f conjugate. Um, that's cross correlation. All right. So really, what we're doing here is we're cross correlating, uh, which is also known as match filtering. We're cross correlating y with f. Okay, that's interesting. And then uh, we're uh, uh, we're, we're uh, then dividing by the magnitude of, uh, of f squared, okay, at each frequency again. Now, um, uh, this uh, this might uh, um, I hope uh, help uh, bring back some memories of uh, a few weeks ago when we were talking about tomography. And we had a uh, um, basically a, a back projection, a conjugate, a a, uh, uh, a conjugate um, 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 uh, adjoint, uh, you know, not inversion, but a, a, a conjugation. Okay, and then we simply, you know, the division was simply a, a normalization. So what we find here is that in our simplest case, where we're trying to deconvolve, what we end up with is kind of just a normalized. Um, it's a it's a normalized um, um, cross correlation, right? So we're we're the essence of deconvolution. You know, all the work is done in this cross correlation, and then there's a little bit of normalization. All right. And that's uh, that's the only place where there's an inverse. Now, of course, the problem is that is that our data are very poor. You know, we've really got nothing but noise at those frequencies that are outside the sweep. If we're looking at vibrator data, okay. But what is going to dominate? What frequencies are going to dominate here, where uh, um, where the uh, the power spectrum of the source wavelet is zero is near zero, so that's outside the sweep. That's really going to control this normalization and thus control the uh, uh, the deconvolution. And and of course, uh, you know, if we really have no um, you know no power no power at a at a frequency in the in the source uh, wavelet, which very frequently we do, then we can't use this this relationship at all. So just like in tomography, we, we find that inversion is accomplished by a conjugate operation, you know, just cross correlation rather than than a processing uh, a processing process. Sorry about that. Um, you know, it's it's inversion is most most of the work in the inversion is a piece of processing, which is then normalized, and it's the normalization. That supposedly is the essence of the inversion, right? Dividing by f. Um, that uh, that is where we're going to have the most trouble, and the parts of our data that are noisiest are going to dominate the inversion. Okay. We'll look at this more. Let's uh, let's include noise. Okay. So our uh, our x 
is uh, and, and we we you know we showed the noise up here in getting the data, right? So now uh, to get x, uh, we take uh, y and we divide by f, and then we subtract the noise divided by f. All right, and so here it becomes very plain that what we're doing is is we're going to you know where where f is uh, it has small magnitude, right? And and here it is. Uh, uh, you know, now normalized, you know, multiplied by f uh, conjugate on the on the numerators and denominators. Okay, so um, you know we uh, um, where where uh, f is uh, is small, you know, outside our vibrator sweep, um, we're going to take uh, noise, which you know we might assume at first at least is has about the same amplitude at every frequency. Okay, uh, and so the noise is going to blow up and be the major contribution to our solution, our input x that we're trying to get. You know, once we go um, once we go outside the vibrator sweep, um, where f is small. Okay, now let's let's uh, uh, now now you know this part here, right? You know why does it blow up? What does it blow up relative to? You know we have a good F estimate of f. Then you know this term on the left is going to be almost one. Okay, but when the magnitude of f squared gets low in power, okay, the noise is going to get drastically inflated, and that's going to dominate over the one, the magnitude of one that's uh, in the left-hand term. All right. Well, let's let's try first to to follow that. Uh, um, you know, at least uh, uh, be able to mathematically handle those those places where uh, where f is uh, is very close to zero. Yeah. Is it even necessary to do this correlation if you know exactly what f is? Like if you have like a marine source and you, and you can like know exactly what the air gun does every time or fiber size, can you just straight up just divide it out of the data in the Fourier domain, or you still have to do this? Uh, correlation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that that is actually the same. It's the same operation. Yeah, I'm just wondering okay. These are these are mathematically the same. Yeah. Right. So this is just dividing it out over here. And, but what I want you to realize is this is what's what's th this is this is mathematically the same. So this is happening too. Okay. And what this is showing you is where the the power of um, of f is low, it's going to blow up the solution. Okay, let's look back at the you know by blowing up the noise basically. So so yes, this is uh, uh, you know they're mathematically the same operations, but uh, uh, you know rationalized in this way, I think you can see what's what's going to happen when you do that division, that simple division. Okay, so now let's let's uh, think about what we what we want to do. If um, uh, if the uh, um, you know how how do we how do we you know for the places where where the the power of f is uh, is zero right we can't even write this down right this is nonsense so let's let's uh, uh, let's damp it uh, and and do what uh, Clairbach calls smooth division by zero, and um, um, and and uh, see what uh, what we can get. Okay, so um, uh, and 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 this uh, you know this rationalization, the multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by by f conjugate. What that's going to do is is help us to develop these. Uh, these dampings, uh, and then explain what they really mean. Okay, so we have some, you know, some some uh, real values, right? Uh, x is uh, equal to y. We want x is equal to y over f, and we can form um, uh, then uh, x is equal to uh, y times f divided by f squared plus some epsilon squared. With epsilon small, you know. So, for instance, uh, 
for epsilon to be small, we'll take the magnitude of, of epsilon to be much, much less than the, the magnitude of f. Okay, so uh, when when epsilon is uh, is is really small, really what we got is x is approximately y over f. Um, and uh, what will happen here is when um, and this is the reason for the rationalization, when f is equal to zero, then we get x equals zero. Okay, we're not turning back more information than. Uh, than we started with. So now, now algebraically at least, this will work. Um, we haven't gotten rid of the problem of uh, the dominance of the of the uh, of the noise to the inversion to the deconvolution when f is small. But at least, at least rationalized in this way, you know, with this damping added, um, we uh, at the very least. Uh, you know now our equations are are algebraically correct across those those zero points. Okay, they're not going to give us what we want. You know in the near zero points though. Okay, so uh, let's apply this uh, smooth division by zero to estimating uh, the uh, input the the reflectivity series x hat. Okay, given some f hat right uh, estimate of the source wavelet. So x hat is equal to the uh, here we have the the uh, uh, cross correlation of of uh, f hat with um, with uh, with y you know just in the, expressed in the Fourier domain okay and then here is the uh, uh, the power of uh, uh, you know that's uh, f conjugate times f so that's uh, the power of f. Um, at that frequency omega plus that little epsilon, all right, that has the same smooth by or smooth division by zero properties, all right. This is deconvolution by spectral division with a known source, all right. Now, what what happens here? As we take uh, e to be very small, <clears throat> what do we get? Okay, you know we're we're uh, we're smoothly dividing by zero still, um, so where where the spectrum is zero uh, of of f, we'll we'll get zero on the on the estimate x. But um, uh, other than that, uh, you know where f is non-zero, then x hat um, is inverse filtered. It's the data divided by f. You know as you as you would like. Okay. On the other hand. Let's say we we take uh, e and we increase it. I'm sorry, epsilon. Okay. Let's let's increase the epsilon and make it not so epsilon-like, and uh, make it as large as um, as the maximum magnitude of of f itself. Okay. Make it as as big as the uh, as the uh, the highest energy in the uh, in what we're dividing away. Okay. Well then, what you get is, uh, you know, basically, if this is very large, you're basically just dividing by a constant number, okay? And so uh, uh, it's just a scaled version of um, of f conjugate y, right? Which is cross correlation, which is match filter. So um, you know, this is essentially. You know, all we have to do is adjust the epsilon, and we can either do inverse filtering uh, with all of its problems, or we can do match filtering, which uh, at least a lot of seismologists feel is completely unsatisfactory. You know, we're not we're not inverting anything; we're just processing. Okay, so we have uh, um, our x hat, our estimated in, uh, Earth structure, is equal to. Uh, our estimated source wavelet cross-correlated with our data. That's it. Uh, it's as simple as um, as simple as the cross-correlation by the source wavelet to uh, 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 to get the data right from a from a vibrator source. And here we are. We're taking that same vibrator source wavelet and we're cross-correlating it by the data again. What what good could that do? Okay. Well, I think you see here. It's basically just a heavily damped uh, inverse. All right. 
Uh, here's another way to think of, uh, of epsilon. Okay? Epsilon squared is uh, equal to uh, some lambda. This is our adjustable parameter uh, that's going to determine whether we do match filtering or, uh, or inversion. Okay? Epsilon squared is equal to lambda times sigma f squared, where sigma f is the average value of the, of the spectrum of the source wavelet, f. Okay, right. Remember f conjugate f. That would be the spectrum of f. And uh, sigma squared is the average value of that. You know, over whatever uh, frequency band that we're we're uh, wanting to process over. All right. So um, if we take uh, the closer we we take uh, lambda to zero, the closer we get to inverse filtering. Right, we take it exactly to zero, uh, then it will blow up at the uh, at the zero parts of the f spectrum. Okay, but we can have it to be very small and still get smooth division by zero. Uh, we take it to um, uh, to one, and uh, and and that's what we mean by making uh, um, epsilon squared large, and we get match filtering. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if e, if uh, the noise epsilon is approaching the max of f hat, wouldn't that make the bottom two times power spectra not zero? Yeah. So so let's say epsilon is is you know. As large as the largest value of the of the spectrum, you know, f conjugate f, yeah. right? So, so basically, then you have a, a large constant value that's divided out of um, of uh, of the uh, the match filter. That's what it. That's what it. That's what it's approaching, right? Let's say you know let, to to make it clearer, uh, I'll exaggerate. Um, Let's say epsilon squared is a million times the size of of um, of f squared max. Okay, so basically, you know, you have uh, what's on the denominator here is basically a million, you know, plus or minus one, right? So it's basically a constant million, right? So we're just taking uh, we're taking every um, Every frequency component of um, of the uh, of the match filtering result, and we're just scaling it by that by that one over a million. Okay, so that's not going to affect the uh, the phase. It's not going to affect the uh, uh, the spectrum of the the relative spectrum of the output. It just it just, you know we could we could you know take x and multiply it back by a million to uh, you know, a constant million at every frequency to uh, uh, to sort of get the the match filter result back. I guess I'm just looking at right there. You have x equals y over f hat. Yeah. And then we're adding something to the denominator, and then the denominator disappears. Well, consider consider when uh, when epsilon is zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, uh, or or look at this one. When epsilon is zero, right? Then um, we can uh, uh, we can factor um, f out of uh, both sides. You know, we got we got it multiplied by one here, mm -hmm. f over f. And so, you know, you just reduce that algebraically if epsilon is zero, and what you got is y over f. That one makes sense. But now, if epsilon is non-zero, we're suggesting that the bottom becomes equal to one. No, I, I'm saying when epsilon is 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 huge, the bottom becomes constant, some constant huge value, right? So so let's you know again for my my illustration, right? Epsilon is a, is is a million times the maximum of f squared, right? So the bottom is is basically a million, you know, and and where where f is smallest, it's going to be 
a million minus one, and where f is largest, the, the denominator is going to be a million plus one. But basically, for every frequency, it's still a million. So we're saying the noise is, has a flat power spectrum? Um, no, no. We're, we're saying that the, the, um, uh, if we make epsilon large enough, then the, the source wavelet, uh, the spectrum of the source wavelet isn't going to matter. It's gonna, it basically becomes a constant on the denominator. And what we have left is, uh, you know, really we have f conjugate y divided by some large constant, which I'm not showing here because I could just take it out. It's the same, it's the same at every omega. So we're just dividing by, by a constant. I don't, well, where, where do you get the action of your filter? The action of your filter is, 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 is usually relative, right? Um, so, so if you, uh, if you want a low cut filter, right, you, um, you take you you um, you enhance the uh, the high frequencies and you you um, you decrease the low frequencies. Okay, um, so you might uh, you might divide the high frequencies by the you might divide the high frequency uh, powers by one and divide the low frequency powers by a thousand. Okay, so so that's what that's the action of the filter, the action of the which which now we know you know under this filter model, right? Convolution, cross correlation, um, autocorrelation, they're all just filter operations. Okay, so what we're doing is we're we're essentially taking a Fourier component at a certain frequency and we're we're scaling it. And if we scale it, if we scale it if we give it a very different scale at very different frequencies, at different frequencies, we give it a very different scale. So like for a low cut filter, we have you know, one over a thousand at the low frequencies, and we have one, you know, one over one at the at the high frequencies. Okay, that's where the action of our filter is. And the same thing for for all of these other uh, uh, operations. Okay. Um, but what if we what if we took the high frequencies and we divided them by a million and one? I'm sorry, by nine hundred ninety nine thousand, and we divided the low frequency components by a million and one. I mean, does that filter have much action? So we're assuming the noise basically has a. I'm not talking about noise yet. I haven't said anything about noise. Okay, okay. I'm just talking about epsilon. I'm gonna I'm gonna set that epsilon to be uh, this epsilon here. I'm going to make so large that it it completely overwhelms f conjugate f. Yeah, it's just a, a it's just a number. Yeah, epsilon is just a it's just a it's just a constant. Epsilon squared is just a constant. Let's say it's a million. Yeah. Epsilon squared is a million. It's a million times anything that you get out of f conjugate f. Okay. So so there's no the only action is scaling. You know. Noise would be just a large number at all frequencies. It wouldn't be totally random. So I don't see how we're just taking the noise as a constant number. Right, right, right. But uh, uh, we're not we're not considering noise yet. We're we're just considering um, you know this smooth division by zero. Okay. So. Uh, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that, OK, maybe epsilon is not a million. Maybe it's about the same as, uh, as f, f conjugate f, as the power of, of f. OK? Still, that's, that's very much reducing our filter action. Right? So, so it's more like a constant with frequency 
that we're we're just dividing out of our uh, our match filter. So that's that's kind of Clairbout's point here is that you know all you have to do is is make epsilon epsilon squared equal to uh, to sigma squared where sigma squared is just the average value of the of the uh, the source uh, wavelet frequency a source wavelet spectrum okay you just take an average of that spectrum okay and okay it's not it's not exactly just match filtering, right? You're still having to divide by something, and it does vary a little bit with frequency. Okay, but it is it is going towards a pure um, cross correlation, a pure match filtering. You're reducing the the filtering, and you're just leaving the uh, the the match the match filtering. That's that's really that's really our point here, is that. Uh, we uh, we make epsilon. Yeah, it's not extremely large, right? It's not exactly um, the same, but but what we're doing is is very much reducing the filter action of that denominator. Uh, now there's a, a question that uh, often gets asked. Um, the uh, you know if you have some complex uh, source wavelet f. In the frequency domain, f of omega, the phase of one over f is equal to the phase of, of f conjugate. Okay, and uh, what that means is that the inverse and the match filters have the same phase. And remember, uh, way back in in seven oh six, I said that I wasn't so concerned with with amplitude. I wasn't so concerned with reflectivities. I was very concerned about phase and timing, okay. And um, you know, so here's our here's maybe a, a zero in our f, our our uh, our source wavelet filter, okay. And um, or maybe all of our f zeros are you know sort of in this area, all right. And this is in the complex z plane, okay. Uh, real and imaginary f. Uh, F conjugate, of course, is right down here, and one over F is, as you will remember from seven oh six, it's just the um, uh, the radial. Uh, um, what, do, what do we call that? The uh, um, it's you know one over F. It's uh, polar that's the polar reciprocal. Thank you of the uh, of F conjugate. So where f had uh, phase phi, uh, both f conjugate and f inverse have the same phase, which is one over phi. I'm sorry, which is minus phi. All right. So um, uh, uh, that's just a note on the on the phase, and that's where we're, you know, where we're really relying on to get our filtering action here. Uh, our deconvolution action. We're we're wanting to make changes in phase, not amplitude. So that's why, uh, and this this makes no sense to earthquake seismologists. That's why this uh, this match filtering can be very effective for us exploration seismologists. All right, because even though we're not inverting, we we may just be dividing by a big constant. Okay, the match filtering is carrying all the phase information. In fact, it's carrying the same phase information as the inverse, and that's where we get all the action. Okay. Now, just a note here: uh, another common way to trade off inversion with matching is with what's called a water level. So, um, uh, you make your uh, uh, your rationalized uh, um, solution for x, which is uh, the match filter on the on the numerator, uh, y times uh, f conjugate, and then you divide instead of dividing by f conjugate f plus epsilon, you divide by the maximum value of the magnitude of f squared. Okay, the power of f, uh, and uh, but you all if uh, epsilon times uh, uh, f. Um, 
the magnitude of f max squared is larger than f squared, then you divide by that instead. Okay, and epsilon, of course, has to be between zero and one. Okay, and what if epsilon is one? Well, then you know we fill in the water level, you know, all the way up to here, and we are dividing by a constant value every time. And as we decrease that water level, okay, we get closer and closer to the uh, inverse, you know, y over f. So uh, we're filling in the spectral holes with a water level, but uh, this is retaining. Uh, instead of lifting the, uh, you know, when we add epsilon, we're lifting the spectrum. When we use the water level, we're we're kind of filling in the holes in the spectrum, and uh, maybe it's easier here to see that. You know, if we make our epsilon large enough, if we make it one, then we're going to be filling. We're going to have filled in all the holes, uh, you know, right up to the very peaks. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, the the main thrust here is is all right. We can do deconvolution by uh, dividing out the known source, all right, and depending on, you know, if we use a small epsilon, okay, or small epsilon squared, then we're doing inverse filtering, which is fraught with problems near the spectral holes. If we um, if we uh, uh, if we use a large uh, epsilon squared, then we're doing just match filtering, which will always work. No matter what spectral holes we have, okay, uh, it'll always work. Um, and uh, so the the uh, you know whether it gives us uh, what we want is another question. Uh, but you know, I think it's clear that spectral division in the presence of holes in the in the uh, the divided out source that's not going to work very well either. All right. Um, so. Uh, you know, really, a lot of this is is deciding what do we set epsilon to. You know, can we find a happy medium between all of the you know blowing the spectrum up, the noisy parts of the spectrum up um, with uh, with spectral inversion, or or with this uh, you know sort of uns unsatisfying uh, match filtering processing. You know where we're just recorrelating the data with the uh, with the vibrator wavelet. I mean that just seems dumb. Um, all right, so uh, uh, we should touch on the subject of, of damping. Okay, so uh, uh, and, and we're we're kind of steering back towards inversion here. We have an effect, an objective function that's quadratic in x. Okay, univariate uh, uh, estimator here. Okay. So uh, we have um, our uh, uh, our forward operation on uh, on x minus uh, minus the data y, and that uh, difference that error we square it, and then we add a uh, a damping term epsilon squared x squared. Okay, so uh, that uh, allows us to have x stay. Um, uh, well, we need x to stay bounded as uh, as uh, uh, f goes to zero. Um, so, uh, in a in an inversion uh, process here, we would minimize this by uh, setting dq dx to uh, to zero. Our our q is our, our objective function. Okay, so zero is equal to uh, f times the quantity f x minus y plus epsilon squared x. Okay. And uh, we solve this for x, and what we get, as we've seen before, except now we have this damping in here, is we have uh, uh, f times y divided by f squared plus epsilon squared. So, so we that's exactly what we had had looked at for spectral division. Okay. Now we know what our objective function is for for uh, deconvolution. Okay. So it's uh, 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 our objective function is in terms of uh, x conjugate and x. Remember that's the Earth input. 
okay, which is uh, the Earth structure we're trying to get out. You know, the reflectivities versus time in the simplest, uh, you know, kind of reflection case. And we have the conjugate of the quantity uh, fx minus y uh, times fx minus y. That's just, you know, fx minus y squared. Plus now we know we have epsilon squared times, um, times uh, x conjugate x. Okay. Um, and, and then the, uh, the conjugate, you know, does come inside. The, it will distribute itself uh, inside the parentheses here. So what we're looking at is uh, x conjugate f conjugate minus y conjugate, that quantity times xf minus y. And then we still have the damping term out here. And so, uh, you know, setting uh, dq dx con uh, um, dq dx conjugate to zero, here's the solution for x, okay, which is uh, uh, f conjugate uh, y divided by f conjugate f plus epsilon squared. So now we know that our smooth division by zero is just the same as the solution by linear estimation with all the same properties. Okay, it's time to talk about noise a bit. All right, so uh, uh, let's, let's make some definitions here, uh, which may or may not be familiar. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a variance, sigma squared. This is the variance of the, uh, of the model. Okay, sigma squared of, of x, right? X is what we're, what we're trying to derive. The data are y, right? The, uh, the filter, the source wavelet is, uh, is f. So the variance of x, uh, sigma squared of x is one over n, right? Just to normalize out the, uh, the number of samples, uh, times the sum of, um, uh, these are spectral samples uh, here, uh, x conjugate of omega sub j times x of, at, omega, at the same omega sub j. And then the same thing for noise. Okay, we have a constant uh, you know, trace length here. So one over n again, this is sigma squared of n, right? And we're summing from j equals one to n, and we have uh, n conjugate at omega sub j times n at omega sub j. And we find our estimate of, of x by linear estimation through minimizing an objective function that looks like this. Okay, and um, and the solution was uh, was the familiar uh, smooth division by zero. So um, what we got is a uh, um, an objective function that depends on x. It also, of course, depends on the noise n, and uh, it's uh, x conjugate x divided by sigma squared of x uh, plus now you know also in the objective function is n conjugate n divided by sigma squared of the noise. All right. Now notice that these are relative errors, OK? Uh, and, they're, uh, and so they're dimensionless, right? We, we have whatever dimension uh, x has uh, is divided by sigma, and whatever dimension uh, uh, the noise has is divided by its sigma. So these are dimensionless. They're relative errors. So this, uh, uh, this subjective function q will lead to minimizing both noise and x. Okay? x is the desired Earth reflectivity. All right? it's, it's through minimizing x right here that we avoid the zero division in, in the simplest case of uh, spectral division. Okay? Because we're always plagued by this problem that our spectrum our filter spectrum, especially things as simple as vibrator uh, spectra, um, have uh, have holes in them. Okay, so uh, x equals y over f is not going to work. All right, so really, what we're doing here with our with that solution we came up with, the uh, the smooth division by zero spectrum, you know, it's really an inversion with this objective function. So now let's substitute. Uh, 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 this uh, algebraic rearrangement for the noise, okay, minus n uh, at, at frequency omega is equal to the data y at omega 
minus uh, uh, the matched. Uh, this is the convolution f uh, f of o at omega times x at omega, and we divide and we substitute that into q. Okay, so uh, for the for the noise, right? We don't have an estimate of the noise. We have the data though. So uh, we have q uh, depending on x is uh, the first term's the same x conjugate x divided by sigma squared of x. Okay, uh, so we're minimizing on that, but we have this other term here, which now we know is uh, the conjugate of uh, of uh, the quantity f x minus y uh, uh, times f x minus y. So those are the errors. Okay, given the data, divided by the uh, the variance of the noise. Okay, which we still have to somehow estimate. And we take uh, dq dx is equal to zero, um, and what we get is zero is equal to uh, uh, x over sigma sub x squared plus f conjugate uh, acting on uh, fx minus y divided by sigma squared of the noise, and uh, so x here is, um, and of course this is an estimate, right? This is the model that we want out, the Earth Reflectivity series. It's uh, f conjugate y, the match filter on the data, you know, times the known, uh, uh, times the known uh, um, source wavelet, divided by f conjugate f, as we've seen before. But now here's some explanation of what epsilon is. Okay? This is sigma squared of the noise divided by sigma squared of the model. Okay, x, the Earth reflectivity sequence. So now we know that the epsilon we have to set equal to this. Okay, that's the actual solution of the actual problem we're doing in deconvolution. All right, it's uh, um, the variance of the noise divided by, or this, at the amplitude variance of the noise divided by the amplitude variance of the uh, of the uh, the reflectivity uh, uh, section. Um, so this is a uh, it's a linear estimation solution. Uh, you know we could also substitute uh, for x in the uh, uh, in the objective function q, and uh, instead of substituting for n, and we would be able to estimate n. Then. All right, and that would give us another uh, version of this. Uh, of this smooth division by zero deconvolution. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, pretty significant knowledge now that we've learned that uh, uh, you know actually what this means is we don't get to decide. We do not get to decide what um, uh, what what our epsilon uh, should be. The noise decides for us. Whether we have inverse filtering or um, or uh, match filtering, okay, it's actually not a settable parameter, okay. If the uh, if the variance of the noise is much larger than the variance of the uh, Earth reflectivity sequence, then uh, it's match filtering. That's all we can do, okay. If the variance of the noise is much smaller than the variance of the Earth reflectivity sequence, that's of course what we hope for, but we don't always get it. Well, then we're going to have, you know, smooth division by zero, um, inverse filtering, which is kind of what we wanted in the first place. But but now we see that that when we have uh, a lot of noise, uh, especially in comparison to our our very Small and parsimonious uh, reflectivity sequence. Um, you know, it's out of our hands. We we might have nothing we get to do other than match filtering. All right. Tomorrow, I'll go into these the pitfalls of this, and uh, we'll see uh, what else is going on here.